Hola mi gente, I'm Elizabeth Ortiz for En La Escena. We are here for the screening of In Her Corner with Soledad on Brian. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm Elizabeth Ortiz from En La Escena, and I would like to ask you, what do you think it was the major challenge that you have doing this movie or this documentary? The biggest challenge, I think, was to capture every moment. I mean, I think what makes a documentary great are those little moments where you, you know, it's not in the interviews per se, it's where you, you see her cry, where you see her give, where you see her father terribly nervous, talking about how nervous he is, or just sign, you know, those moments you have to capture, and to do that means you have to send BB to Venezuela, <laughs> and you have to, you know, go to the garden, and, and you have to follow her through Colorado. It's not just, well, we got a number of interviews, and that's expensive, and you don't know really where it's going to go, and um, so I think that that's probably the biggest the logistical challenge. Yeah, and when you're, you're doing a documentary on a boxer, I mean, we've done a lot of uh, reporting on people who are high achievers. This is on some other level. I mean, this chick gets up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and she works out. She cl They close that gym at 8 p.m., and she only stops to eat, and you saw what she eats. So, yeah. I mean, she would say to us, there's nothing interesting about me. I don't know what you're going to shoot about me. <laughs> the first time I, I met her, she showed me she has five phone numbers. Can you imagine on her cell phone? 21 year old woman. 21 year old. Her mother, her father, her sister, her coach, her, coach, her agent. Wow. And I think one of her brothers, but I mean, that's it. She, she literally has no friends. She's not had a boyfriend. There's nobody in her life because she has no time. And so you're following around somebody. She has no time for us either. So I mean, it was very challenging. Every time we wanted to interview her, she would say, okay, I'm available between 8 p.m. when the gym <laughs> closes and 9.30 when I go to bed. And that's, that is when we interviewed her. Most wow. of the time we were interviewing her in this little tiny windows. Hi. Um, I would like to know, how did you feel about presenting here in the New York International Film Festival? Oh it's been amazing, and to watch something you've been working on for such a long time, but on the very big screen is incredible, incredible. We, we you know, we edit on, uh, sometimes on our laptops, or we edit on, you know, computers that are a little bit bigger, but to see it in a giant screen, it, it feels amazing. And where are you from as a Latin? Are you Latin now? I am. My mother was born in Havana, Cuba. Oh. And I was born in Long Island, New York, which is not exactly the center of uh, Latin America. But, um, uh, you know, my mom was, is, uh, was always really, I think, pretty adamant about making sure that we knew as much as we could about our culture, considering that we couldn't go back to Cuba. Couldn't, you know, now, of course, as a journalist, I go fairly regularly. But as a kid, when, when friends would go, you know, to the Dominican Republic or friends would go to Puerto Rico because that's where their families are from, there was no going back to Cuba. It was not possible. Um, now I get to go a lot and really explore fly, uh, my, um, you know, my roots and, and get to know some of my family members. Great. And you as a mother, as you as the trainer that she has, like very demanding, don't go out, don't eat, don't I do wish, I wish. I wish I were like that. No, no. I'm much more like Oreos for breakfast. Sure. Why not? I mean, no, I, I, you know, we're somewhere in between. Um, I'm pretty demanding, but I also am pretty flexible, too. You know, I think four kids can be pretty chaotic and uh, and we set a kind of a low bar for for drama. Yeah. What about um, you relationship? How do you feel like related to the character in the uh, in the film? Like the the connections that you have with her? You know, she's so young. She's so much younger than me. So when I hear her say things like, you know, if I can just win a gold medal, I'll I'll, I'll be happy for the rest of my life. And you think, you know, you're you're young. She hasn't lived a lot, and and she's not been exposed to a lot yet. But she also is a hard worker. And she's clearly somebody who is going to work hard for what she wants. And when she has her setback, what I love about her story of her setback is, you know, she turns it around. And, and, and she wallows in sorrow for a little bit. And then she says, you know, me getting here was not a mistake. I'm going to turn that around. And, and again, the, you know, this, the subtitle of the doc is in her corner because it's really about all the people who are there to support her and make her successful. It doesn't just happen, you know, accidentally. Yeah. And what about you in your career? Do you feel very compared to her, like very like your dedication, your tenacity, everything? You know, where I feel very compared to Marlene is I feel very supported. I have a lot of people in my corner. You know, I have a lot of people who will make sure that I'm successful. And I'm a hard worker too, 
but really it's a combination of those things. You need to be a hard worker and you need to have people who are rooting for you and helping you get past you know, failures and mistakes and I absolutely have that, absolutely. I think to my strategy in the documentaries we do has always been to just tell more stories, to get more of our stories and more of anybody's stories on, to add to, you know, there are some terrible stories in the Latino community. We show some of those really best, and there are amazing stories, and then there's the whole range in between, and they can be accurate. So the, the, for me, the strategy has been, let's tell more stories. Marlene Esparza exists and let's show some of her struggles and let's show some of the ways she's amazing uh, and then let's you know highlight other people as well and, and tell more of those stories um, i think the more you can do that then you start painting a very dynamic picture of what it means to be latino in the united states and also what it means to be an american you know marlene is 100 percent American. Marlene has speaks terrible Spanish. <laughs> you know, she is a girl who's in in, in Tex Mex Houston and she really is like, Wow, I really don't want to do this interview in Spanish. My Spanish is horrible. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, me too, my Spanish is terrible. <laughs> so I think that that's the dynamic, you know, of who she is and that exists too. Um, you know, she's a first generation American trying to make it, who's ridiculously proudly Mexican American and also 100% American who wants to represent USA in boxing. And to be able to flesh out that picture of this young woman, I think is, is great. Thank you so much for your My pleasure, thank you for, for having me, appreciate it. Thank you Soledad O'Brien for this amazing interview. Guys, you have to check in her corner. This is Elizabeth Ortiz for En La Escena. See you soon.